one of the biggest gifts that we have in life is chaos. And I'm here to tell you that we all need to embrace it more. But before I do this, let's play a game. I've got a deck of cards here. And what we're going to do is I'm going to flip one over after the other. And after a while, I'm going to ask you to take a guess what the next one might be. You ready for this? Yeah. Very good. Okay, so let's start this. Two of hearts. Three of hearts. Four of hearts. So you see the world is full of hearts. Which one do you think is next? Five of hearts. Five of hearts. Very good. What do we have? Any skeptics? Anyone with trust issues? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> next one? Six of hearts. Exactly. That's the way it works. So first of all, I would love you to be in awe about what you've just done here. Because you've accurately predicted the future. And the way you've done it was by collecting data, identifying a pattern, predicting the future. And we do this all the time. Right? I do it when I look in the fridge to figure out what's there try to establish the patterns of who is at home at the moment, what time of the year is it, is it Thanksgiving or whatever, and then I predict what I need to put on the shopping list so that the table is ready. Do it all the time. And I'm going to tell you that this method going about creating the future, data, patterns, prediction, is not great. It doesn't give us the most out of life. Instead, it makes much more sense to embrace chaos. I'm a scientist, I've done years of research, and the first thing that I've learned there was that science is all about exactly that, data, patterns, prediction. But there's also a social life to it, of course. Now, do you know the social life of a physicist? <laughs> oh, come on, that's not the right reaction to that. <laughs> but it, I can tell you, it's a black hole, just as you imagine. But I've learned so many things there, right? One of the things when you look at the evolution of humanity is that our relationship to science went through some stages. Ancient times, we didn't understand much. And the things that happened, like lightning, the motion of the stars, we need to attribute them to greater powers, to gods, universe, nature. And at some point in history, there was a breakthrough. People saw we can actually understand things. It was in the Renaissance. And one of the leading characters was Galileo Galilei. The story has it that one day he was at the cathedral in Pisa. And as was customary at the time, the doors were open and a breeze could blow through the cathedral. And in that breeze, the chandelier began to swing, like this pendulum here. He saw the motion of the chandelier, and as the breeze calmed down, he also saw the chandelier calm down. And he noticed that the time it takes for one swing stays the same. No matter how big the swing, the time is the same. And in seeing that, he discovered harmonic oscillations. And that's at the core of every watch, it's at the core of every microprocessor, it's all around us in this theater here, and it really has become the cornerstone of the technology that we have. Absolutely essential. But there's something else about this pendulum. When you look at this for a while, what else do you notice here? It's just boring. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know how else to say this. <laughs> we can do this for another hour, but <laughs> this is just boring. <laughs> and it's boring partly because he missed something about this pendulum. And what he missed is that there is a singularity. Now you might think physicists on the stage talking about singularity, now we hear about his dating life. That might also be boring, but that's not it. What I mean is the singularity up here. Here at this point, when the pendulum is right at the top, right in the middle at the top, you cannot predict if it goes left or right. So this hallmark of predictability everywhere else becomes unpredictable in this one point. And I can make it even more unpredictable by changing this pendulum a bit. This looks like one, but it's actually three that are connected with each other. 
need to take some pins out here. And then you see it's actually three separate. And I can all move them around and take a look at this motion now. Now, some of you may think this looks like your org chart, right? <laughs> In physics, this is called a three body problem because of the three arms. Three body problems are chaotic. Everyone who is divorced knows this. <laughs> But the interesting thing here is, this is mesmerizing, right? This draws us in, this draws our attention. And the life that we see here comes from the chaos. No matter how much computer power you have, you cannot predict the motion of this pendulum. It's a fascinating thing. There are rules in play. The rules of gravity apply. The rules of harmonic oscillation apply. And it's still unpredictable. It's different from disorder which has no rules, but there are rules in play here, and that brings out the life and makes it unpredictable. And that's also what we need to do, to embrace that chaos, and maybe even create that chaos to get the most out of life, to really fully engage with the life that we have. Now, there's one thing that you all know about me, probably from the first sentence that I spoke, and that is that I'm not an original Warringtonian. <laughs> from Munich originally. And one other thing that you don't know about me also is that my father was an alcoholic. I grew up in an abusive household and the most painful thing for me was that my father would keep telling me that I'm responsible for everything that went wrong in his life. And it literally took me decades to understand that I'm not responsible for his suicide. But here's the thing, when I think back to that now, I also realize that that experience of hopelessness, being limited, being trapped there, and also the atheist household that I grew up in, led me to reach out to my faith community that I'm in now. And that has become a pillar of my life. Being trapped, felt trapped in that situation, made me reach out to do the biggest leap I could imagine, and that was to apply to Cambridge and study there. And it even made me come here, and I've been here for 25 years in the U.S. now, and it made me realize that people here just don't fully appreciate German humor. <laughs> but I'm still not over that. <laughs> but here's the thing. Chaos is messy. Chaos can be difficult. Chaos can be hard. But it's the one thing that leads to richness of life, that leads to the fullness of life that we can have. Seneca famously said once, I'm sorry you've never had any misfortune. No one knows what you're capable of. Not even you. I encourage you to embrace chaos, to create some chaos. Get rid of the shopping lists or other lists that you have. Occasionally open the email client that you have, go to the inbox, select all and hit delete. <laughs> And very importantly, you need to find this pendulum in your life and make it swing. Thank you very much.